So two destination options with um, 365 Business Central update. And I, I've sort of alluded to both of these, but let's talk through that. So you've got an on-premise option and you have a cloud option when upgrading to Business Central. I just say this again, planning, um, planning is very important in this process. Okay, so this is not an upgrade like you've done before with NAV. It sort of is, um, but if you talk about going from an on-prem solution to a cloud solution um, in particular, there are gonna be things that you haven't had to deal with and had to do in the past. So make sure that you plan this process and know what's gonna happen so that everybody's on the same page and it's smooth, okay? Before we um, discuss the two pass options, I think, um, there's really another decision to make, which is in terms of, you know, business central um, on-prem and on the cloud. The, the, you need to think through that of what are the implications of that and, and what are the goals that I have in that. If you'd like to remain with an on-prem solution, and I sort of say that in air quotes, but, but want to be um, hosted, okay, so there's this hybrid um, option. There are deployment options that would allow you to lever, leverage, let's say, Azure. So setting up Azure services with a SQL Server and Windows boxes and that sort of stuff, that would allow you to eliminate internal hardware, still giving you a cloud solution, but it's not the multi-tenant cloud solution that the full SaaS offering comes with. So again, depending on your goals, we could still get you a no hardware, you know, internal hardware solution, but still in a in a cloud environment. Okay, so this is a, I think of this more of a continuum than a, you know, a, a binary on-prem cloud, right? There's a lot of sort of in-between space here um, that can be discussed and be considered depending on, again, um, what your goals are. There are a number of things to consider when hosting on-prem. So cost, you need to think about related um, software costs for operating system database. You need to be thinking about um, related hardware costs for server backup systems. You need to be thinking about maintenance costs, again, with hardware, server OS, databases, and the, the dynamic system itself. With an on-prem solution or that, that hybrid solution in Azure, you still need to be thinking about upgrades. So obviously Microsoft is not gonna upgrade your system, so you need to be thinking about server OS upgrades, database upgrades, and then um, the Dynamics BC upgrades, okay? Again, in this hybrid solution, these are factors you need to consider in this decision. Um, you know, how you're gonna do backups, restores, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then I think the biggest one that's really come to light in the last six months is offsite, um, you know, access by employees. What does it look like for um, our employees to work in a distributed world. We've sort of toyed with that idea. Um, you know, our client base is really a mix of, of um, options for employees. We have clients that, you know, allow employees to work remote all the time. We've had some clients that really have frowned on that. Well, having us all work remotely, remotely in a really because we have to, you know, for the last couple of months, um, a lot of our clients have had to deal with the reality of this. What does it look like for um, employees to work at home or other locations and, and dealing with mobile uh, mobile employees. Business Central, particularly with the SaaS environment, um, just takes care of all those issues for you. So again, I don't have to provide hardware for my employees. I don't have to provide software for my employees. They just needed internet access, work from wherever they are, access to the system. Not always the case with an on-prem solution. So, you know, think through, you know, what are our goals um, around a system? All right, you know, positives with the cloud solution in terms of SaaS. So this is just software as a service for the cloud. Again, I said, you know what your, your software costs are gonna be per month, per user. Um, you don't need to deal with upgrades. You don't need to deal with maintenance. I, I think not having to deal with upgrades and not having to deal with maintenance is a huge selling um, upsell for a SaaS offering. Um, easy employee uh, access to employees with the, outside the system. Um, not only do we have, uh, provide a browser-based um, access to the system, there's apps that are available from Microsoft as well. So those run on Windows devices, Android devices, um, and iOS devices, both phone and tablet, allow you full access to um, Business Central, again, via whatever device I wanna work with. A uh, couple caveats on that. I think we're at, I'm gonna say 98% functionality on the tablet device and probably 95% functionality on the phone. Um, there are some uh, screens that just don't load correctly on the phone. Um, they deal particularly with time card entry. 
So if you're not doing time card entry, um, you know, the phone is probably 100% functional for you. The same thing with the tablet. So just know both of those are available, again, for remote employees or even employees that maybe want a different UI to work with. You can download those apps, same user ID and password. Um, we talked about, a, you know, that, that NAV or that business uh, central service tier. That's what I'm connecting to. So in terms of customizations, personalizations, um, those all just rolled to both apps. So if I, you know, rearrange my item list to pull some fields onto that list that I want to view, I open up a business central on the app, they're there. I open up business central on the phone, it's the same environment. So nice thing about a user, user a unified user interface uh, applies to all my users. Um, out of the box connections to Office. Um, and this is again with a SaaS solution. So if you wanna leverage the Power Platform and the Common Data Service, um, there are ways to leverage it if you have a SQL Server on-prem, but going to a SaaS solution makes all of that, um, all those connections much easier, much quicker. So when you, um, you, know, you spin up a tenant that's in SaaS, I wanna connect it um, to the Power Platform. Connectors are all there, they all work, it's all done. I don't have to do any additional configuration to make those things work. So if you think about creating Power BI reports, you think about integrating with Power Automate, um, integrating with the Common Data Service, super easy to do when I'm in the um, SaaS offering. You can do it with the, with the on-premise solution, but you're gonna have to do some work to get those things um, connected. I think another great selling point of the cloud is security. So both database and user access um, um, security. When you talk about having remote employees, when you talk about you know interoperability between all of these systems, um, I don't have to worry about holes um, you know in my firewall and that sort of stuff as I'm connecting these systems together. Microsoft manages it because you're all in the cloud. They're already behind a firewall for you. A couple of things to consider really is uh, again the um, Office 365. Um, connection options, again, much easier when you go to the cloud. And then you do have to think some about um, extensions or ISV products um, when you go to the cloud versus on-prem. Um, they kind of read the fine print on some of the extensions that are available today, particularly if you don't um, download them from the marketplace. If you have an on-prem solution, you're gonna need to look at those and say, are they gonna work or, or not work? In general, I would say, you know, it, if you're sort of thinking about the cloud, I would really encourage you to take a step back and seriously consider the cloud as an option um, and, and look at uh, the total cost of ownership of an on-prem system versus the cloud system. I think what you're gonna see is that the cloud system is really uh, the way to go. 